Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries, and in this RPG review, I'm going to be looking at the game All Their Strengths by Malachi Charlot. All Their Strengths is a tongue-in-cheek RPG that tries to capture the fast-paced, supernatural-tinged action of the early 2000s films such as Blade and Underworld. The game has a focus on playing hybrid supernatural characters and has a striking red cover featuring a sword-wielding wolfman. You can see that there now. I'm reviewing a colour PDF that Malachi was kind enough to send me as a review copy. It's 67 pages long and it costs just under £6 in English money, which is I think about $8 US as of the time of filming. A printed version is also available from DriveThru and I'll put a link down below in the description. Okay, so to those of you who have not seen my RPG reviews before, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm giving a short rating at the start with a little bit of a description so anyone who wants to can just see the rating and they don't have to watch the entire video. Anyone who does, there's a more detailed breakdown later on. So for the four categories, which are writing, the look of the book, system and background, I would rate all their strengths as follows. For the writing, I'm going to give it a blank because although the book is well written, some of the terminology used is a little unintuitive and it would benefit from some further explanation. I can see a fair bit of page flipping being necessary until a GM is more than passably familiar with the rules. For the look of the book, I'm going to give it a plus. It's got a slick, stylized look to it with some comic style art that really works well with the themes and tones of the subject matter. The artwork is a little sparse, but when present, it does the job really well. My only complaint would be the use of white text on a vivid red background for certain sections. It ties in with the cover color scheme, but isn't the easiest thing to read, especially on a PDF. For the system, I'm going to give it a blank because although it seems workable and it's obvious the author has put a lot of thought into it, for a game that's sort of billing itself as a Raw's light game, it doesn't really feel that easy to read and understand. There are concepts and terminologies that a GM will have to wrap their head around before being able to run this game, and I think they'd benefit from some streamlining. The background, I'm going to give the game a plus. Although the word background is fairly sparse, I think it was wise not to go into too much detail. After all, we all know the sort of real world with supernatural dangers that is much beloved of many a film. So, if we look at the overall rating, we can see that it has a rating of fair. It's a very interesting game that is working hard to portray a specific mood and represent a particular genre of film as an RPG. It succeeds partly allowing you to portray many different types of supernatural creatures, but it feels a little rough around the edges and obtuse in some areas, particularly for a game billing itself as Raw's Light. I recommend the author have a look at games like Dungeon World, etc. that do a lot with very simple rules, and I would love to see a second edition of this game with a more streamlined rule system, because I think the subject matters very appealing. So, there we are. I'm now going to go into my slightly more detailed look at the system. So the book opens up with a little bit of in-character fiction from some grizzled old Whistler-style dude called Rasp. It sets the mood of the game up very well. We're not looking at angsty explorations of supernatural darkness or again posing deep psychological questions about the nature of humanity. This is a game of kick-ass hybrid heroes wielding guns and taking names no bad thing. We move straight on to a list of what you need to play the game. It's a fairly standard list of dice, people, etc. The PCs are referred to as hybrids in the game and the GM is referred to as the Shadow. The game describes the Shadow as the director and ad hoc writer of the movie. It's not a bad description as far as they go and it does reinforce the Hollywood vibe of the game. A short glossary comes after that, defining some of the terms used in the game. Now, I'm a big fan of having glossaries like this at the start, since they're useful for reference, and it ensures the reader isn't getting confused by terms that show up later in the book. We then move on to a description of actions in the next section, and the game describes these as short tasks that players, or hybrids, 
can undertake. These are defined by their kick, which is a measure of the action's ability to overcome opposition. In order to increase their kick, the PCs can take risk, putting themselves in danger. There are other factors that can also add to it, including scenes, which is an area of expertise possessed by the PC, gear, obviously the equipment, and strengths, a benefit granted by the PC's supernatural lineage. My only slight bugbear about this section is that the descriptions make liberal use of the game-specific terminology before the reader has really had a chance to become familiar with them, and there's not really any further real explanation offered. Now, I know there's a glossary a few pages back that you could flick to, but would it really have taken a great deal of effort to just add in a little bit more explanation, especially where in this section when there's a lot of sort of blank space at the bottom of some of the pages, which could have easily been filled with just a few more lines of explanation. Complicating actions is a process called foiling. After an action is undertaken, there is a short period of time where another person can try and foil it with another action. The example given in the book is the shadow of the GM declares that their vampire is going to shoot the possessed child. The PC might then take the action, but I chuck a stake through its heart before it can pull the trigger. It seemed a little odd to me at first because you're sort of like revising stuff while it's going on, but I do think it suits the action film vibe of the game, allowing you to capture that moment when something big is about to go down and the hero comes in with the last minute save. The GM can veto any action that it is impossible for players to undertake. I'm not sure why it was necessary to state that explicitly, since the GM has that ability in most games. It certainly doesn't hurt to have it down in black and white, though. I think maybe it was introduced because the players have a lot of leeway with actions in this game, being able to introduce objects, people and story elements using their actions. Longer, more drawn out actions are described as cutting actions. Effectively, you describe what you're doing, the scene fades out and then we jump back into a new scene, playing out the results of the cutting action. We then have an example of play. It's quite useful and gives you an idea of how the author envisioned the game running. However, it is on that vivid red background with white text that I mentioned earlier in my rating of the game. And whilst it's quite striking and all ties in nicely with the colour scheme of the cover, it is quite difficult to read, especially on a PDF in my opinion. The next section is about hybrids, and this is the character creation portion of the book. It opens with a brief summary telling you the steps you need to go through in order to make a character. Each player chooses two lineages to reflect their mixed heritage. These give the character various strengths and weaknesses. There's a boxed out human lineage listed here, presumably if you want to play a half human character. It doesn't really give any strengths or weaknesses, but it also imposes no discord. Now at this stage, I'm not really sure what discord is, and it appears to be missing from the glossary. Destiny is also mentioned here and doesn't appear in the glossary, but I'm assuming it's going to get explained later. A player then creates an origin for their hybrid, and a few examples are given. It's clear that creating long, detailed backstories isn't the order of the day with this game. Give your characters a couple of points, a dramatic hook, and you're good to go. As the author rightly says, you can always do a prequel story to expand on this background later if you want. Each hybrid in the game has four stats, which are built, their muscle power and strength, fast speed and coordination, hot personality and sense of style, and sharp, which is like your intuition and your perception. These are ranked from zero to five. At the start of the game, the player gets six points to distribute between them as they see fit. Each hybrid also has a number of scenes or areas of expertise that they excel in. They may have up to eight scenes in total, each of them ranked from one to three, and they get five ranks to spread around at the start of the game. PCs also have gear, which act as a rank one scene for the purposes of helping with any actions they undertake, where the equipment would feasibly make it easier. And hybrids start with three pieces of gear. A fair bit of attention is given to the look of the character, which is how they appear physically. This doesn't really have an in-game mechanic or effect, but since we're trying to recreate sort of Hollywood action movies where the heroes are slick, gun-toting badasses, always there with a whippy comeback, it seems appropriate that it's discussed here. When damaged by an action, the hybrid's hurt rating 
increases to the kick rating of the action. A hybrid's hurt rating subtracts from actions they are trying to undertake in the future. The author goes into some more depth about injury and death in the context of this in this section. And it seems like a workable system, although it is a little confusing due to the unintuitive names of some of the game concepts. Although I think this would lessen as familiarity with the game increased. Supernatural powers run off one of three types of power or supernatural energy, charge, juice or amp. These seem to exist solely to provide some distinction between the different power types and the energy sources they can use. It's a workable system, although the list of stats and figures is getting pretty big at this point for a game that is building itself as raw as light. Each character begins a session with one destiny point. They can spend the point on automatically massively succeeding at a single action, also gaining a secondary benefit. If the destiny hasn't been spent by the end of the session, then the hybrid gains a plus one rank to either a stat or scene. I'm not generally a fan of game points that also work as XP, since I think you're always stuck with the unenviable decision about whether you want your character to be like cool as during the session or whether you want them to actually advance in terms of the mechanics i can see it working well in a campaign of this game though with players saving their destiny advancing throughout and then using their point in the final showdown with the main villain at the end of the story arc the next session is called Shadow, and it's the GM section of the book, really. It begins with a discussion of threat. Essentially, at the start of each session, the GM rolls a number of dice equal to the number of players and adds this number to their threat rating. They can also gain further threat when players use risk to boost their chance of succeeding in an action. The GM can use threat to increase their own dice rolls. They can also combine threat dice into a doom, which is effectively some obstacle or antagonist that is going to appear to menace the players. Although I found the explanation of how exactly to create them a little baroque. Although the creation of a doom is described as something done during play, I think a GM would have to be very familiar with the system and quick on the draw to do this without it noticeably slowing the game down. We then move on to a description of the world of the game, and it's basically the modern day world, but there are monsters, magic, and weird science. The author suggests running the game as a chronicle that focuses on a single threat or villain. It seems appropriate for the source material, and there is even a handy random chart for GMs who just need a little bit of help with that. The next session is titled Kindred, and it deals with the various species of monster running around in the world. It also gives an explanation of Discord. Essentially, Discord serves as a balance for the more powerful bloodlines. If your Discord is higher, then you will have more weaknesses. Strengths are the powers possessed by the bloodlines and are split into the following categories. Charm, which is the ability to manipulate people. Bond, a link with another being, object or phenomenon. Power, the ability to use supernatural energy. Unkillable, they can't be killed by traditional means. Immune, they're unaffected by certain effects. And Morph, where the hybrid has one or more alternate states. Weaknesses are also outlined and consist of allergy, you can be injured by contact with certain substances. Drain, the hybrid can be drained of its energy under certain situations. Issue, they're incapable of taking certain acts. Peril, they can be lethally injured by a certain substance or situation and lose control where the character has urges or anger issues. The game then goes on to provide splats for the various bloodlines in the game, detailing their society and their abilities. I'm not going to go into them all in massive detail, but there are the usual vampires, werewolves and witches, along with some others like zombies, mummies and reapers to name but a few of them. Each of them has a very well written couple of pages detailing all you need to play them. It's a shame there isn't really any artwork in this section showing them, but most of the creatures are fairly well known, so it's not exactly difficult to imagine what they look like. So there you are. That's my breakdown of all their strengths by Malachi Charlo. Like I said, I'll put a link to that on drive through in the description below. As you can see from my fair rating, I do think it's an interesting game. I love the, the subject matter that it's going into because I, I like Blade and all of those sort of like 
cheesy like action supernatural films i do think however the raw system would benefit from a little streamlining and a little paring down to be perfectly honest but all in all i think it's a very reasonable game it's priced fairly cheaply and if you're into that sort of action supernatural vibe and you don't mind having to learn a little bit of new terminology and master a a slightly more complex set of rules than you might be expecting from this type of game then give it a look you might find it enjoyable so i hope if you've enjoyed this video review you'll click on like and subscribe to my channel until i see you next time take care and happy gaming And we hope if you like this video, you'll check out some of the others on Red Dice Diaries. Take care.